I'm Will Lockamy. And I'm Reed Lockamy. And this is the Iron Bowl Hour. Or as we like to call it, the show that would like to take 15 seconds of silence to mourn the time that Alabama spent trailing Ole Miss last weekend. Okay, really, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. On tonight's show. You yeah. don't mind if uh, the enforcer here, uh, Dragon, gives a look, huh? Let's search. Okay, it's great. No? Well, you mean that style, you know what I mean? You know, different strokes for different folks. He has a tie on, you don't. Gosh, Reed, I've never seen such a rainy and foggy agree to disagree. You can barely see the Huntsville skyline behind us. I disagree, Will. It is not raining, and we are filming in Birmingham. I don't know what's wrong with you. It's the battle of the bottom of the SEC West this weekend when Auburn faces Arkansas. But does a win in this game mean anything for either team? Well, I'm glad I get to go first on this one. I'll take the easy side. Of course it matters. It's an SEC West matchup, Reed. When has that not mattered? This it, year, right now, no, this weekend, no, no, it doesn't does matter. matter. Who wants to be the first team in the SC West to, to end up seventh? Or you, nobody okay. wants to be the first. You have started off with a terrible argument, saying that all every SEC West game matters. Yeah. Think about every Egg Bowl that's ever happened. Do you know what the Egg Bowl is? Uh, you have to think about it. It's, it's ooh, something in Mississippi, It's right? when Mississippi State <laughs> plays Ole Miss. It happens every year. Nobody ever cares, no, right? No. And it's even at the end of the season when people are trying to squeeze all the last little bits of college football out of the season. I bet every can. year it's rated the worst football game in the country. It probably is. But my point is this. Just because two teams are playing in the SEC West doesn't mean that it's going to matter. And here's the thing. For Arkansas, th this season is over. It's been over for like three weeks for them, right? So it's it's totally over. It was over halftime at the Alabama game. So it doesn't matter what happens to Arkansas. That's They're out of it and nothing matters. And for Auburn, look, I guess it, it matters because they need a win, right? But they're going to get a win and it's going to be against a really awful Arkansas team and it won't mean anything. No one's going to look at Auburn and say, congratulations, you beat Arkansas. No, but think if they lose the game, then people are going to look at them and say, uh, Auburn, what in the heck is wrong with you? They had obviously a dismal start to their season. They've had one of the toughest schedules in the country, and now uh, October kind of eases up for them just a little bit. They need yeah. to win all these games in October. It's really important no matter who they're playing. Yeah, and it's more it. important for them to win this game because of the repercussions okay, look, if they lose. I can maybe buy that it's that a not loss will be important for Auburn, right. right? But a win for Auburn is not really going to mean anything because once again, the quality, and I'm really using the word quality <laughs> loosely here, the quality of opponent is so low. You know, Arkansas, did you see how badly they lost to Texas A&M last weekend, Will? It was like, well, it was I, about like 58 points. It was something crazy. I didn't even something notice crazy. that because I was watching uh, the other little angry Petrino. The there is game. a little Petrino on the sideline and <laughs> yeah. he is very angry. So mad. But that's because he's working for the worst college football program that exists right now, even worse than Notre Dame will. So anyway, in the end, the point is, this, who cares what happens to Arkansas, right? In a weird way, if they win the game, that's all. That's almost a problem for them because then people are going to be like, why haven't you been winning other football right. games? You've been able to win football games. So nothing matters for them and for Auburn. It, it's a it's a hollow victory if they do beat a, a just sort of a shell of a team. Uh, I'm going to have to totally disagree with you. Uh, did you notice though how the cameras the other day during that game barely even showed John L. Smith at all? I, I did not. I, I did not notice that. Yeah, I bet Arkansas requested that. that that's a merciful decision, though. <laughs> Are college football fans ruining the game by taking fandom to the extreme? All right, well, uh, I think it's pretty clear to anyone yeah. who is a follower of college football that these fans are completely out of control, yeah, just totally. absolute lunatics doing yep. things that people Nutty. should not be doing. And I think that that is fantastic for college football. So they are not ruining it. They are really just making it that much better of an experience for everyone else. Reed, here's why they're ruining it. I had to explain to my mother what was. That's awkward. <laughs> it's totally yeah. awkward. Oh, oh. No, they're absolutely ruining it, Reed. Uh, mm -hmm. we take the University of Alabama. Mom Let's brings just, a lot of tea, too. She, nice, does, yeah. she does. Yeah. Let's just use the University of Alabama okay. as an example, right? Yeah. This is a school with a ton of tradition. And a couple of really crazy fans. It's great, yeah. <laughs> a couple of crazy fans that are ruining it for everyone else. Now the whole country looks at the University of Alabama and says, yeah. and just thinks Harvey Updike and just thinks, the University of Alabama fans went and poisoned the trees in Auburn, Reed. Okay. We know that they didn't do it as a big group. It was just Updike. Well, I think you are 
confusing the issue here, though, right? Harvey Updike, right? And the fella after the championship game down in New Orleans who was just nuts, right? Uh, that Those two guys are ruining it for someone. They're ruining it for Alabama's fan base, but they're really making it great for fans of every other team in Division One college football who now really have something at stake anytime Alabama either loses a game or does poorly, then people get to take such delight in, oh, that stupid Harvey Updike and that other idiot. Think about how upset they must be this is you know this is the way college football works it's about Tammy being upset and it's about Harvey Updike being upset that's what you live for in college football. we have to we have to acknowledge that this is bad anytime individuals act this way and represent an institution like the University of Alabama it's bad for them individually and sure it's bad for whichever fan base happens like like the LSU guy who had his his calf branded and I don't mean like a baby cow I mean the calf of his leg have you seen this <laughs> no branded with the uh, you know what do you call those things initials L S and U this is right before the uh, the championship game boy is that embarrassing like hey look I just got this new horrible wound on my leg and also we played like crap in that game so <laughs> one way it's like people who show up to a game with face paint and then if you lose at the end you're just the sad person who's all painted and it's really disgusting now but, we can agree that fans crying at the end of the game that's funny yeah and Tim Tebow or whoever but the, the point that I'm making is that these people these crazy fans are bad for their own programs but really good for 99% of the college football world because these these are the this is the stuff that rivalries are made of right I don't it's, know. you don't even I, care about the you don't care about the players from the other team, what you care about is that idiot, you know, who's a fan of the team that you hate, and when their team loses, you take huge delight in their misfortune. It's Schadenfreude at its most basic and purest form. And well, good news for me, you now owe me twenty dollars because I did indeed fit the word Schadenfreude into this week's episode. Well, that's bad news for that's me. Good news I for think me. we can agree that the this looks bad for the state of Alabama as a whole. I think the rest of the country looks at us when these things happen yeah. and think. What are they, the state of Mississippi? No, oh, that's bad. Read after the break, Andrew the Dragon McCain takes me down to Auburn to show me how Auburn fans prep for a big loss against LSU. Is that the former presidential candidate? Uh, did he run? Maybe. John McCain, sorry, John McCain, sorry. Read recently, Andrew the Dragon McCain took me down to Auburn to show me how Auburn fans get ready for a big game and then to watch a bunch of Tigers walk around. Is that right? The Tiger Walk. I've heard about that. Yeah, yeah. Pretty interesting. Sounds dangerous. They look more like football players to me. Hmm. So we find ourselves again in Auburn, Alabama. This time I've got Andrew the Dragon McCain. He's going to show me around, show me how Auburn fans tailgate, where all the good food is, the good parties, and we're finally going to finish on something they call Tiger Walk, right? Y'all just stick with me. We'll check it all out. War Eagle. I'm officially terrified. <laughs> Out of everything that I predicted today, I didn't predict this heat. It's pretty hot out here. It is it? smoking hot outside right now. I'm sweating. Well, speaking of smoking hot, uh, there's some former Auburn players here. It seems this is where they tailgate. How we're, about this, huh? We've got Tommy Trott, Joe Cope, and Cooper Wallace hanging out What's right going, now. What's going, guys? How, are How you doing, doing man? Good, doing? good. Good to see you guys. Good this is where uh, all the all the star players, I, I star players hang out. I didn't want to include Tommy. Man. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of us, man, we try to get back together and uh, have a good time on Saturdays, man. Come enjoy the crowd. Excellent. Now, you know, as all the other fans are hanging out, do they recognize you guys? Do people know who you are on here? Sometimes. I think we're all about half the size is when we were actually playing. So McCain, they have... Andrew McCain's actually a quarter of the size. Quarter, of the size. Exactly. Exactly. Probably pretty close. Tommy, any chance you're going to get back in the game this evening? Uh, I think the fans would prefer I didn't. <laughs> because it's somebody, who took your place? Uh, Watson Kirkland. Uh, Way better than you. Good. <laughs> it was time to put my newfound friendships to work on the field. So, guys, you got a little football game going? Yeah. Yeah. Mind if I get in on this? Yeah. You guys versus me, huh? Yeah. Awesome. Dragon. Yo, come on, Sherry. Come on. This? Yo, come on. One play, huh? Okay. Ready? Be my center there? Joe's the center. Knock it out. Oh, God. Hey. <laughs> While checking out the sites, we noticed some students in line for the game a long time before kickoff. What's going on, guys? Can we ask you a question real quick? Yeah. Okay, so it's five hours before the game. Yet you're already here at the gate, right? Yeah. What's, what's, the, what's the point in that? Um, we're, uh, we had to save seats for our friends that are uh, out working right now. Your friends that are out working? Yeah. Older friends? No, our, no, our no, pledge brothers. Our pledge brothers. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Now you guys don't have any, uh, 
anything you'd be sneaking into the stadium, do you? No. no. You, if we get caught and get kicked out. You don't out. mind if uh, the enforcer here, uh, Dragon, gives a look? Huh? Surge. Okay. It's great. No? You check my. All right, I do Did have. Did you go up? What's it? What do you. Can. You have a can? But it is a Pepsi can. A Pepsi can? You want to make sure that's a Pepsi? It's unopened. Unopened Pepsi unopened. can? Unopened. Okay. And nothing in your shoes. Nothing in my shoes. What are you thinking I'm trying I to do don't know. here? You don't mind taking your shoes off, do you? Why Just not? A There's nothing in my shoes. Might be a little gross. They're a little, bit, a little nasty. A little, a little gross. Things nearly got out of hand when the infamous TigerDroppings.com tailgaters challenged us to a game of life-size Jenga. Oh, yeah. I was against you guys? It's just Jenga, man. You never play Jenga? I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, dude. I'm, I'm young, man. All right, here we go. Go Tigers! You look like you've done that before. All right, ready? Well, hold. We decided it was probably best just to head over to Tiger World. Now, Andrew, I'm not the most punctual person in the world, but I thought showing up 30 minutes early may be plenty of time, but apparently not for Tiger World. One would assume so, but let's be honest, they take it pretty seriously around here, especially the LSU game. It's going to be a big night, man. Even though Auburn probably has no chance of winning this game? I'm not going to say no chance. I think they've got a shot, man. That's why we're here. we got to get those guys ready to play. That's sweet of you, Andrew. That's very sweet of you. <laughs> They actually started the Tiger Walk when they used to live at the dorms and Pat Dye had them walk down to the stadium from the dorms and that's how Tiger Walk started. Now so many teams try to mimic it, man. Trying to figure out what Auburn does to do so well, right? I, I suppose so. This year, this year we're just trying we're just trying to keep it going, man. Let's go, T! Go make me proud. Play with heart, baby. Gotcha. Alright, set your boy Lipsy Kirk. That was Wesson Kirk right there. That's my man. This is the moment when you realize that the word fan was derived from the word fanatic. Right. <laughs> you know? But like, this is when it all comes to light. I mean, look at, that's just nuts. That's silly. The dragon was right. There may be copycats, but there's only one tiger one. Well, thanks a ton to Andrew McCain and everybody down at Auburn for being so nice while I was down there. Reed, did you see me totally destroy those guys in football? Well. I saw you beat the small children. Oh, I beat them. That's, yeah. like, that's like beating Arkansas. It's meaningless. We covered yeah, that well, earlier. Yeah, for sure. Hey, Reed, up next we're going to hang out with former Alabama Crimson Tider, Derek the Classic Lassic. Derek Classic Lassic. Mm -hmm. Reed, it's time for Rapid Fire Questions on the Grill, brought to you by Billy's Sports Grill, of course, with former Alabama Crimson Tider, Derek Lassic. Ready, Derek? Yes. Right, Here sir. we go. More exciting victory, beating Miami in the Sugar Bowl or beating the Bills in the Super Bowl? Miami in the Sugar Bowl. Okay. Uh, he's a homer. Yeah, we're here in Alabama. That'll so. play well to our base. That's there you good. go. As a Bama alum, but also a former Carolina Panther, you a Cam Newton fan? Scam Newton? No. Oh! <laughs> shots fired. Ooh, Watch out. Interesting. Your performance in the 1993 Sugar Bowl was classic. Do you mind if we start calling you Derek Classic Classic? Oh, been there, done that. Oh, oh nice. Derek Classic Classic. Classic. Derek Classic Classic. Derek yeah. Classic Classic. Sounds like good. It. Rumor has it that seven Alabama players dozed off during the game against Arkansas. Do you believe that, or do you think it was more than seven? Uh, more than seven, yeah. yeah, probably so. True or false, Eddie Lacy and Kenny Bell are planning on dressing up as Millie Vanilli for Halloween this year. False. <laughs> Have you seen their hair, though? <laughs> yeah, well, Ooh. you know, oh. I kind of like it. Oh, come on, man. I do. Seen it down. Who was the first person to wear dreads at Alabama? I was. Oh, OK, classic, that's classic. fine. <laughs> How many teams are there in the Big 12? 12. No, no, it's actually 10. Right. It's actually yeah. 10. How many teams are there in the Big Ten? 12. There are 12. That's correct. <laughs> it's there ridiculous. You, you get it right eventually. Yeah. How well can you spin a football on the ground? 12. <laughs> nice. 12. 12. 12. 12 times. That's good. No, Great. pretty well. Pretty well. Great. Uh, does Emmett Smith ever ask you to stand in for him at awkward family functions that his that he'd rather not attend? He has on a couple of occasions. If, if there's a contract dispute. Right? Yes, exactly. Okay. Interesting. Good. So we're going to try to ride an elevator? Let's go ride the elevator.
All right, Derek Classic, sorry about getting out in the rain there. It's just a formality. Okay. You know, I, hey, I'm sugar. I'm melting, too. You know, I know, but right? We, we feel bad about that, yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's jump right into talking about this year's Alabama team. We talked on the uh, show last week about how maybe they haven't really been tested yet. They play a, uh, an Ole Miss team this past weekend that's you know, not regarded as a, a fantastic football team. Or even a football team at all. Some yeah. people don't, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So how do you gauge this year's Alabama team? Do you think they're great or are they just good or what's the deal? I mean, what time will tell. Um, you know they're going to be well coached because Coach Saban does a great job of getting the guys prepared. Uh, he's going to have uh, some great athletes. He does a great job recruiting. It's just all about going out there and, and executing and establishing an identity. Well, let me ask you about the change in college football from the time when you played to now. Uh, you know, your team famously came up against a Miami team that was full of all this smack talk, and <laughs> it seemed like there was a lot of personality between the players. And nowadays, it seems like a lot of that craziness has moved to the fan bases, and you don't see that as much between players. Do you sense that as well? How is it different now? It, it is, you know, and, well, they can – talk trash on Twitter like uh, mm. McCarron was doing with yes, the Honey true. Badger. Yeah. They, they can do it that way. Yeah. But on the field, you can't really do it as much as we did. You can't celebrate like we did. You're not supposed you to spin the ball in the yeah, field anymore. Definitely right? like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things mm -hmm. of that nature. You know, yeah. they let us be boys a little more now. And um, I guess they want to try to clean the game up, make it a little more like the NFL. But, you know, the kids still have ways to talk trash. I have to point out, I, I thought our dad was the only person that referred to Twitter as Twitter. Now, but now they're <laughs> classic. But they well. tweet, you know, they tweet, tweet, <laughs> tweet. <laughs> Do you, some people I know as the rules have changed have sort of lamented the fact that no longer can people do end zone dances and all that. Do you think that the game would be more interesting and exciting if players were allowed to sort of, you know, strut their stuff a little more? Yeah, I think so. You know, within reason. You know, don't do anything crazy. You know, Sherman had the little shake, Sherman Williams that had the big one. Something, you know, subtle. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, it's not, um, it's not insulting the other team, you know, because right. you did just score on them. But, you know, the answer to that, stop them from scoring. They won't yeah. be dancing in the end zone. So yeah. speaking of uh, you know, insulting the other team, I I'm a guy who hates smack talk before the game, after the game, if it's warranted or not. Well, I and to be stand. fair, we're Tulane fans, so yeah. we just had enough of it over the years. Yeah, but, absolutely. You know. But you guys had to go up against the, the worst smack talkers ever, <laughs> Miami 92. <laughs> What, did, what was that like hearing all that? Because, I mean, they, you, know, you guys were an underdog. They were letting everyone know that, and they just thought it was going to be a walk in the park. So what was that like for you guys? When I was coming up, Miami, Oklahoma, they were the two best teams in college football for a while, and they always talked chess. You know, you hear of Alabama, you, great tradition, right. you know, business-like going there, and they don't really talk trash. So we knew that going into the game. We knew what to expect from Miami. So, you know, some of us got uh, drawn in a little bit, i.e. the Roosevelt's of the, right. you know, the mm -hmm. Prince maybe a little bit. But, you know, we're a class organization. We knew that, and we were going to let our plane do the yeah, talking. Yeah, that's right. right. One of my favorite quotes from that era, uh, people forget that Bob Marley's son played on the Miami <laughs> team, and uh, Derek Classic Lassic uh, <laughs> said about him, and I quote, that he is a naughty, naughty little boy. <laughs> and it was almost as if you turned into a British nanny or something like that with your smack talk, which is pretty classy, I think. Well, you know, hey, I, I'm a big Bob Marley fan, you know. Sure. Um, and Rohan, I mean, I mean, he was a pretty decent player, but Rohan Marley, I didn't really hear much about him during the season. You I know? heard that he wore marijuana socks. Is that true? <laughs> Maybe. Well, I mean, you know. Possibly. <laughs> so did you know going into that game, did you guys feel confident you were going to win? People always say that, but did you actually feel confident? Yeah, I honestly thought we could win that game. You know, I said if we can score a touchdown and maybe a couple of field goals, because Miami was supposedly have a pretty good defense. Right. I, I figured our defense wouldn't let them score more than nine points. So if we can score 12 to 15 points, we'd be okay. Right. And that's honestly how I thought. But the game kind of got out of hand. We beat him in all phases of the game. And listen, he sounds so much like a New Yorker. People probably don't think about that if you haven't heard I him. I know, right? Anything. Well, yeah, I'm a Southerner now, but, you know, mm -hmm. I remember it's a true story. I came to Alabama, and a um, uh, guy named Craig Harris, who's from Florida, white running back. Mm -hmm. So he's like, oh. I'm sorry, what? He, yeah, he old, probably didn't get a lot of playing time. Well, this is the story. Oh, okay, he's a sorry, white yeah. running back. Yeah. So he's like, oh, he met me. And he's like, man, where are you from? I said, I'm from New York. And he knew it because, mm -hmm. you know, I was pretty highly recruited. And uh, he said, oh, okay, they don't play football in New York, do they? I said, oh, yeah, well. I said, where are you from? And he said, I'm from Florida. I said, oh, okay, what position you play? I knew he played running back. He said, running back. I said, fullback? He said, no, running back. I said, linebacker. 
<laughs> he said, running back. I said, how many white running backs do you see in the SEC? You'll right. be a fullback or a linebacker before you leave here. So, and then, um, Who was we, he? he ended up being a special teams and a full, fullback. <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, he got your water for you. Uh, you no, well, he, me and Craig were pretty cool. He, Craig's a really good guy. But him giving you a hard time, he sounds like a naughty, naughty little boy. Yeah, he was a naughty yeah. naughty. I started to spank him, but you know. Yeah, sure. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, this has been a lot of fun, Derek. Thanks, yeah. Thanks yeah. for yeah. hanging out for yeah. sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I like this. We should make that a new formality. Yeah. Shaking hands. Yeah, shaking hands. hands. Yeah. Uh, up next, it's time for the Wickles Pickles Picks of the Week. Wickles? Yeah, they're great. <laughs> Well, Reed, it's no secret anymore. When the Lockamy brothers pick pickles, we pick Wickles, and it's now time for the Wickles Pickles Picks of the Week. Yes, we're going to pick the games as closely as we can, Will, and if we are off by however many points we're off by, then we pick up that many points in the competition, right? So the lower the score, the better. Right now I'm beating you. It's 120 for me to 120. Five for you. And don't forget, Will, at the end of the season, the loser of this competition, that's going to be you, is going to have to eat a plate full of extremely hot wings from Billy's Sports Grill. Well, I love Billy's Sports Grill, so that may actually be okay. They are going to be very hot, though. They're going to fix up some special ones. So, Will, the only game we have to pick this week is Auburn versus Arkansas. How do you see this one turning out? Uh, well, this comedy show, Reed, I think Auburn's going to come out on top. Because they got to watch out, though. Arkansas is a wounded dog, so right. you never know what could happen there. I'm picking Auburn by 13. Okay, I, I also think Auburn's going to figure out a way to win this game at home, but I think maybe only by 10 points. All right, people at home, don't forget that you can follow us at the Iron Bowl Hour on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And, of course, you can listen to our radio show, Oh Brother Radio, on Birmingham Mountain Radio every single Thursday. Unfortunately, Will, we're out of time. we got to get out of here. I have a pan of shrinky dinks in the oven, so <laughs> that's, that's all for this week's show. They're getting big, Reed. Yeah, They're no doubt. Big. Just no smaller, Will, and they get smaller <laughs> shrinky happens? dinks. Yeah. For the Iron Bowl Hour, I'm Will Lockamy. And I'm Reed Lockamy. Roll Eagle, Reed. And more Tide, Will. The Iron Bowl Hour is brought to you by Wickles Pickles. Add an exciting new taste to everything from Thanksgiving dinner to Saturday sandwiches. A Wickles Pickle will tickle your taste buds just right. Billy's Sports Grill in Birmingham, located in English Village, Overton Road, and coming soon to Northport. Billy's, come on in and feed your goat. And Vulcan Park and Museum, home to the world's largest cast iron statue. For more information, log on to www.visitvulcan.com. Texas A&M can come to the SEC and have only male cheerleaders. We can get away with our pom-poms. <laughs> only male cheerleaders? They have only male cheerleaders. You uh, didn't know this? We're we going to talk to Mike Sly.